Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the auto domain node. And what the auto domain node does is it automatically sets an image's domain of definition based on the bounds of the input image's background. And it doesn't change the physical dimensions. It just kind of minimizes the data that's in the image. And this node is extremely simple, but very confusing and hard to conceptualize because there's no visual feedback on what the node is actually doing. So to explain it a little further, let's, let's jump in here. And I've got this little setup we used on our particle emitter breakdown. And these are EXRs. And EXRs by default create domain of definitions within their files. Meaning for this individual footage, a domain of definition is set within the EXR telling this file, even though we have a resolution, the domain of definition is actually within the bounds of this image. And to kind of see this, I'm going to add a couple notes to it. And well, well, first, what that's doing is that's minimizing the file size. So instead of this entire area being considered something that needs to be rendered, it minimizes the domain of definition just to around the actual pixels that it's picking up. So only that is what's being rendered. So it speeds up render time a little bit. But to visualize this, I'm going to add a set canvas. set canvas color and in essence what I'm doing is I'm kind of erasing this domain of definition by adding a canvas color to this so I'm gonna come in here and actually just change up our alpha and even though you can't see what's going on it's believe me we just changed the information in here and I'm gonna grab an auto domain And what this auto domain does is as soon as I plug it in, it's picking up where this pixel information is. So it knows where that first pixel is hitting and it's going to set our domain of definition around it. So I'm gonna input this and you're not gonna see any changes until I come in here and start changing the left. And sometimes it takes a little while for it to uh, start picking up. And there we go. So I'm going to change this left. So you can see I'm altering this domain of definition and you have left, bottom, right, and top. It's kind of almost like a crop node, but it's actually just changing that domain of definition of that image. But I'm going to dial this in so I can get the bottom up there right before those pixels and the right in the top. So this is actually what the EXR is doing by themselves. So all these individual EXRs, each one of them is doing this. You just can't see it. But to show you that once I take this off, since I changed this auto domain definition, it's going to kind of screw up my image because it's going to assume it was based off the original domain definition. So let me zoom in here. And as soon as I remove this set canvas, which remember in essence, moved our canvas to the entire 2048 by 1152 of our image. As soon as I take this off, it just minimized that based off of the domain of definition stuff we changed. So if I reclick and reset all this, it's not taking this domain of definition all the way back out it's setting it to the EXR's original domain of definition. So you technically don't ever need to use this for an EXR image, but some images don't do this automatically. And that's why I say it's kind of difficult to see because you can't see what it's doing until it actually hits. So again, if I change our left, you notice the minute I start going from zero were taken away from our image. So how do you know if an image does or doesn't have a domain of definition set up already? Well, like I said, that's what's difficult about it. So most images that aren't 
data-driven, like EXRs, are not gonna have a domain and definition set. Now, Fusion, I'm gonna go ahead and set something else up. I'm gonna bring a background and a merge. Another background. Let's get a black background going. And I'm gonna merge this in. Let's change our color to a little orange. And let's bring in, say, a square. And actually, let's bring a multi-merge in. A square. So we get a little rectangle going. And then I'm gonna bring in a circle. And let's make that small. Sorry, an ellipse. I'm gonna bring that over. I'm gonna merge that in. So now here we've got our circle and our square. And by default, Fusion is actually applying this auto domain of definition on these. So if I bring in an auto domain and input it, the minute I start changing, you can see we're cutting in on our little circle because our domain of definition is already set by Fusion to say, hey, I'm only gonna go around these pixels in a little square domain of definition. Now, some other images, and let me grab one. Let's grab this cube. And this is a ping file or a PNG and it's animated. So if I take our domain of definition, so basically what this is doing is telling this image, which didn't originally have a domain, domain of definition set to it, all these pixels are being rendered every single frame. Once we bring in a domain of definition, it's just minimizing that data and it's per frame. So every frame is gonna recalculate so it's not cutting off your image. Unlike a crop, which would actually cut off your image. This one is just recalculating that domain of definition to bring it in so this image renders back faster than the original image. So back to why you would use this. If you had, say, a composition with 40 or 50 different elements going into it to composite everything together. If you had giant images like, like this that didn't have an auto domain set, it's gonna get extremely taxing on your computer to be able to render all that information. So using an auto domain on it to minimize what has to be rendered is gonna save you uh, memory. It's gonna save your computer a little uh, information so it can render faster, especially if you've got tons and tons and tons of data going on. So that is the auto domain. I will see you in the next node breakdown.